Hello everyone and welcome to another Stargate lore video. Today's topic was requested by James Pagwiep, who actually requested this topic twice. I don't know if I should be rewarding that kind of behavior, but sometimes I need a good kick to get on a topic. So today we are talking about the Ori. Hallowed are the Ori. Hallowed are the Ori. History. Before I begin in full, I should note this video is talking about the Ori, as in the species, the ascended beings who create origin. But similar to the relationship between the Serakin and the Heberdans, due to how interconnected the Ori are with their followers and the Priors, I'll be talking about them as well. So this video, I guess, more covers the Ori as a faction as a whole than a specific race. Millions of years ago, in a distant galaxy, the first evolution of human life had developed. For simplicity's sake, we shall call these people the Alterans for now. At first, their society was one, but a philosophical division had occurred, resulting in the creation of two groups. The first group, who we will still call the Alterans, who adopted scientific and pacifistic views. The other group became the Ori, who gravitated towards more religious beliefs and became increasingly fanatical and hostile against their former brothers and sisters. The Ori grew very large in number, and at first the Alterans tried to hide their technology. But when the Ori amassed armies and proposed to attack, the Alterans, unwilling to use their technology to fight back, fled this distant galaxy until they found a new home in the Milky Way, thousands of years later. I should note there is a possibility this was not the last interaction between the two groups before they ascended. It was theorized by Dr. Jackson that due to the similarities between the Prior's Plague and the Ancient One that the Ori had created in an attempt to wipe out the Ancients. This is confirmed in the book Transitions, where we learn the Plague was created by an ancient named Amara who converted to Origin and, under the directions of the Doci, created the plague to wipe out the non-believers among the Ancients. Whether or not you want to count the book as canon, the idea that the Ori created the Ancient Plague is interesting, as it would imply that there was some contact between the two, or at the very least, the Ori knew where the Ancients were. We really don't know much about what the Ori did in their galaxy prior to their ascension. One can make so many arguments and theories about what they did, such as saying they did allow for some technological development, or you could say they didn't. The simple fact is, right now, we don't really know. What we do know is that eventually they learn to ascend. Also because I know people are going to ask, no, I don't know who ascended first. Personally, I think it was the Ancients because if the Ori ascended first, they would have used their new godlike powers to wipe out the Ancients. Meanwhile, I can 100% see the Ancients ascending first and letting their crazed, unhinged cousins who want to wipe them out ascend and not do anything to stop them. There's also something humorous about the idea that the Ori, who are obsessed with their religion, finally gain the power of gods, only to find that their nerdy, atheistic cousins who they beat up a long time ago beat them to it. And I find that extremely funny. Anyway, we also know that at some point the Ori created their own human population in their galaxy. It's never really stated when they did this, before or after they ascended, but regardless of when they created these humans, we do know they would pass down a religion called Origin. We'll get more into why they did this later, but simply put, they did it as a way to increase their own power. Even in the higher plane, the Ori wanted to destroy the Ancients, but didn't have sufficient power to do so. What the Ori did not know was that there was a human population in the Milky Way galaxy, and possibly Pegasus. They were shielded by the Ancients, and as long as no one in the Milky Way tried to make contact with the Ori galaxy, everything would be just fine. So, what do we do? Well, I'm guessing we just put these two stones in any two of these spots. God fucking damn it! Thanks to the actions of Daniel and Vala using the ancient communication terminal, the Ori were made aware of the existence of the humans in the Milky Way galaxy in 2005, and wasted no time in sending priors to spread the word of origin. I should note this really wasn't a good time for the Milky Way either. The Gould Empire only collapsed a few months prior, leaving countless human groups without their so-called gods. The Jaffa were trying to form a new nation, and somewhat failing. The Lucian Alliance was formed and started to become a major player, and then the on-again, off-again threat of former system lords trying to rise to the power. The point is that the state of the Milky Way galaxy was not that good, and the power vacuum left by the Ghoul Old Empire made a perfect time for the Ori to come in and invade. At first they relied on sending priors through the Stargates, as if they tried to directly interact or interfere with the humans in the Milky Way, the Ancients would step in and stop them. 
but humans working for the Ori was okay because free will. The Priors would go around the galaxy spreading the word of the Ori, converting those they could, and destroying those who rejected Origin. A favorite tactic among the Priors would be to unleash some kind of disaster among those they would preach to, usually a plague and only cure those who would convert. They would also try and take advantage of any political situation they could, such as on Tegalus where they helped the RAN Protectorate build a satellite to use against the Caledonian Federation after RAN agreed to accept Origin. Or when a prior convinced Garrick, the first leader of the Free Jaffa Nation, to adopt Origin and try to have him spread its teachings among the Jaffa. While the Priors were going around doing all this, back in the Ori galaxy, the humans who served the Ori were in the process of building great ships to transport their holy armies to the Milky Way galaxy, to convert those who would not follow the Ori. As for how they would travel to the Milky Way, they would do so through the Super Gates, gateways like the Stargates, but on a much more massive scale. The first attempt by the Ori to build a Super Gate was on the Free Jaffa world of Kalana. This first attempt failed, but did result in two things. First, Kalana was destroyed as it collapsed into a singularity meant to power the gate. Second was Vala who disrupted the gate's construction before it was completed and was transported to the Ori galaxy, where she would be impregnated by the Ori and give birth to Adria, the Orisai from One All Will Learn, an Ori in human form who would be able to lead the armies of the Ori against her mother's home galaxy. In 2006, the Ori would try and establish a second super gate. Unfortunately, Stargate Command was unable to stop this gate from activating, and the Ori would send through four of their motherships. They would be met by the allied forces of the Tauri, Asgard, Free Jaffa, and the Lucian Alliance. This led to the Battle of P3Y229, or as I'm going to dub it, the Battle of the Supergate. Although it might be more accurate to call it the Massacre at the Supergate, as the Ori ships just walked through the allied forces. The Ori ships and the armies they carried would go around converting or annihilating multiple worlds, all being led by Adria. This would lead to a full-scale crusade or war against the Milky Way galaxy. The Ori forces would call this event the Great Enlightenment. This whole war can be made with a video in and of itself similar to the Atlantean Wraith one, so I'm just going to go over kind of the major points here. Earth was able to tie up the Ori Supergate indefinitely with a Stargate in the Pegasus galaxy and the process is drawing not only an Ori ship, but a Wraith Hive ship as well. This would be one of the few tactical victories for the Milky Way forces, not only destroying an Ori ship, which at this point in time was invincible, but also preventing more ships from coming through. The Jaffa, in desperation, used the Dakara super weapon to wipe out an entire planet recently conquered by the Crusaders, though it left the Ori ship intact. But Adria survived the attack and in response launched an attack on Dukara, destroying the weapon and fracturing the Jaffa even more. The only real hope for the Milky Way was the Sangrilla, a weapon created by the ancient Merlin that could destroy ascended beings. Though the Ori found out about this weapon as well and wanted so they could destroy the ancients. A team of SG-1, Baal, and Adria would have to complete a quest together in order to find the weapon, but upon completing it, minus Adria, they would find that the weapon had been destroyed by Morrigan. However, she left Merlin alive and in a stasis pod so he could one day rebuild the weapon if necessary. But he had aged too much while in the pod and passed his memories on to Daniel so he could complete the weapon. Daniel built the first two parts of the weapon, but the team was found by Adria and her forces and Daniel was captured. Adria thought she could convert Daniel and made him a prior, but Merlin's consciousness protected Daniel from the full transformation. He made contact with Stargate Command. Hey, what took you guys so long? And convinced Jack to shut down the Supergate so they could redial the Ori galaxy and send the Sangrilla through, wiping out the Ori. They did this, and while they did not find out till later, the plan did work and the Ori were wiped out. Now this should be where the story ends, but there were two problems. First is technically not all the Ori were gone. Audrey was still alive and later she ascended and gained the full power of the Ori. Second was despite the Ori in mass being gone, the Crusaders weren't and still believe their gods were with them. The best analogy I can give is no one is holding the leash, but the dog is still trying to bite you. A case in point, Right when Earth relinquished control of the Supergate to send the Sangrilla through, six more Ori ships came through. Though Earth would later be given an Asgard beam weapon that could destroy Ori ships, 
the threat of the Crusaders was still massive. The Crusade came to an end after the events of Ark of Truth, when the Ark was used to make the people of the Ori Galaxy see the truth about their so-called gods. With all that excess power gone, Audrey was now just as powerful as any other ascendant being, and now Morgan could engage her in eternal combat, and thus this marked the end of the Ori. Biology The Ori were once the same race as the ancients, and while there may have been some genetic drift between the two in the thousands to millions of years they spent apart, odds are they still share many traits with their ancient cousins, we just don't know what those similarities or differences would be. In their ascended forms, they take on a more fiery appearance compared to the ancients, who have more of a ethereal, angel-like glow to them. For the humans they created, we don't actually know much about their biology, though I'd imagine they're closer to what the early Alterans were like rather than what the humans of Earth were like. Although the humans of Earth could also be what the early Alterans were like as well, but the point is that they're basically just like humans and we should accept it. I never really explained what priors were in the history section, so priors are humans, or Jaffa, who were artificially evolved by the Ori, gifting them many near ascendant abilities, such as various forms of telekinesis, the ability to grow crops, heal the sick, restore the recently dead, control fire, levitate, deflect weapons fire with a force field, cause great pain to their enemies, survive in hazardous environments, create disease, natural disasters, and monsters, or even zombies. Their unique brain physiology also made it so in theory they were the only ones who could pilot an Ori ship, though Sam did later create a workaround. One interesting quirk of their biology is priors have a built-in kill switch. This can be activated voluntarily if captured or involuntarily if the prior betrays the Ori. Most of these abilities seem to require the prior's staff to help them channel their power. Society we don't know much about the Ori society before they ascended, though we can assume that on top of being fanatically religious, they were also fanatically warlike, given the fact they were prepared to kill off all the Alterans. I also think it would be safe to assume that they were authoritarian and didn't like dissent given how they treat the Alterans and their human worshippers. As for what their society was like when they ascended, I can't really say, although I do wonder if they have their own coffee shop like the ancients do, or maybe they have a bar? Their human worshippers seem to live in villages run by administrators, who run all the political and religious items of their society, though the administrators will defer to a prior if they are around. On top of this hierarchy is the Doci, the chief prior, the one who speaks for the Ori, almost like their version of the Pope in a way. We also know there was an underground group of non-believers in the Ori galaxy. They tried to gather artifacts that predated their existence in hopes that one day they could reveal these artifacts to the rest of their people and convince them the Ori were not gods. They were considered heretics by the rest of their society and would be killed if caught, usually burned to death. Now this is where we get to the big part, origin, which I actually kind of want to make a video about the religion in and of itself and kind of go over its various functions. And given how long this video I have a feeling is going to be, let's just hit the basics. Origin was the religion created by the Ori and passed down to the humans they created. Origin promises that if one follows the path, they will achieve ascension. However, this is a lie. While Origin teaches that people have free will, in reality, the religion was created so humans would surrender their free will to the Ori, which produced a form of energy to them and gave them great strength. The Ori also did not ascend any of their followers, as then they would have to share their power with them, so none of the humans in the Ori galaxy, even the Priors, knew the truth. This also needs to be done in massive numbers to have any real effect, which is part of the reason why they wanted to conquer the entirety of the Milky Way galaxy, as only conquering half might not do it. Part of me wonders if this is how the Ori religion pre-ascension also worked, where there were those at the top who told this great lie to all their followers below them. A question for the future, I suppose. Technology. Ori technology is somewhat interesting, and I can tell this is going to cause a lot of controversy in the comments. We know that originally the Ori rejected scientific understanding in favor of religion. However, some have theorized, out of the universe, that the Ori did allow for some technological development prior to their ascension. After they ascended, they mandated that any technology prior to this be destroyed, as their followers may have begun to question their gods. And this is where the controversy I can just tell is going to come in from. 
Did the Ori develop all their powerful technology before or after they ascended? There are arguments for both sides, but the fact is, at the end of the day, we don't know. This is never really talked about or brought attention to. As far as I know, this question has never really been answered by an official source. As for my own belief, I think the Ori did have some technological development, especially since if they created the Ancient Plague, that probably took some serious biological engineering to achieve. Unless, of course, you believe that the Ori sent first and used their powers to make the plague. But getting back on track, I do think that a lot of the modern technology we see from the Ori, such as their spaceships and weapons, were created from the ascendant knowledge they gained after they ascended. Speaking of tech, it is by far some of the most advanced technology we have ever seen in the Stargate universe. Their shields were nearly impenetrable when the crusade began. At first, the only way to bring their ships down was seemingly to use weapons of mass destruction, such as the Event Horizon of a Supergate and the Dakara Superweapon, though that weapon didn't destroy the ship and even Adria survived it. Later, the Asgard would develop a beam weapon that could penetrate the Ori shields. And in an alternate reality, we learned the drone weapons of the Antarctic outposts were able to keep the Ori ships at bay. So we do know that other advanced races can counter the Ori. Besides some other examples of advanced technology, such as energy weapons, sun weapons, and ring transporters, there's two pieces of technology I think are of note. First is their super gates, as this is one of the few times we see a race besides the ancients develop something like the Stargate. The only known gate besides these gates that was not developed by the ancients was the Tolan Knox gate. Second is their various uses of biological warfare, things like the Prior's Plague, beetle creatures, and zombies. Though it is important to note these were seemingly the result of the abilities of the Priors and not necessarily technological development. The priors themselves were a result of the Ori using their ascendant powers and less technology. Though the prior staff is an example of technology, which as I said earlier helps the Ori to channel their powers and acts as a link between the priors and the doci. I do want to end this section by saying while Ori technology is powerful, it is not without its failings and weaknesses. As we saw, one can create counters to their tech and abilities used by the priors. Relations with other races. The Ori themselves probably have poor relations with almost everyone they encountered, and certainly everyone we know they encountered. They hate the ancients and want to destroy them. As for the humans and the other, lower species, they have somewhat of an odd relationship if you think about it. Sure, they saw the lower races as nothing more than subjects to use to feed their own power and never really cared about them, similar to how the Ghoul Order Wraith treat the humans in their own galaxies. And yet, as long as one accepts Origin and believes in the Ori, they don't seem to have an issue with you. I mentioned this in the Serakin video, but I read something once that said the Ori were anti-alien, but so far I've still yet to seen any evidence to prove this. Heck, we once saw a ghoul world side with the Ori. So it's this weird thing where the Ori are willing to accept anybody as long as anyone who joins them accepts Origin. I also imagine the humans of the Ori galaxy have some bad relations with those from the Milky Way. Sure, the Crusades end with the Crusaders leaving, but I have to imagine there's plenty of groups and individuals in the Milky Way who are not happy with the actions carried out by the Crusaders. Even if the Crusaders regret their actions, it will take some time before many are willing to forgive them, if they're willing to at all. How do you go on? It is simple. You will never forgive yourself. Accept it. And that was the Ori. There's this quote I heard not that long ago that I think really applies here. If I had to choose to live under a tyrant or an inquisitor, I would choose the tyrant. As the tyrant's tyranny might end as he sleeps, but the inquisitor never sleeps. Overall, I really like the Ori. I think they were a good replacement for the Guo Uld in SG-1 as the big villains. And part of the reason I think I like them is that just of how big of villains they were. They kind of remind me of the Yuzong Vong from the Star Wars in a lot of ways. They're both extragalactic and both fanatically religious. Some people might want to compare the Yuzong Vong to the Wraith because of the use of organic technology, but really the Ori are a lot more similar. The Ori are also interesting as they kind of give us a new light on the Ancients. Now I, and some of the comments have, kind of bashed certain advanced groups like the Ancients, the Tolans, and others about not using their advanced powers or technology to step in and solve problems. But there's this good debate between a Prior and Daniel about using your advanced knowledge and technology to help those on the lower planes. Maybe hoarding knowledge is wrong. 
Well, maybe it's not. Maybe learning something for yourself is part of the journey to enlightenment. I like this. Sometimes you have to let your kid go and let them figure out things on their own and not just hand things to them. If I had to state one problem I had with Leroy was that I think the Crusades didn't have as big as an impact as I feel we were led to believe. I mean the Crusades only lasted, what, two years I think? And remember that thing I said earlier about groups in the Milky Way not forgiving the Ori Crusaders? Well, we don't really get to see that. I don't know, I think when you have the idea of a galaxy invading another, there should be kind of more toll on it. For example, with the Langarans, we know they were one of the worlds that were conquered by the Ori, but when we see them next, they don't seem to be having trouble from the invasion. I don't know, it's this weird thing where it feels like the Ori Crusade should have a bigger impact on this world, but it kind of feels like it doesn't. But I don't know, what do you all think of the Ori? Do you like them or do you not like them? Do you think they were a good replacement for the big bads of SG-1? And would you like to see us go back to the Ori galaxy one day? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below and maybe leave a like and subscribe. And remember... The Ori are all seeing. They are already aware of this affront to their eminence and shall strike down those who dare to defy them. Nothing yet. You? Yeah. Drawn a blank. A little thirsty. That doesn't count. No, it doesn't.